alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still striving seas my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love Righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I Thank you for joining us for worship today. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. And then right after that prayer, we're going to hear a very special version of the Lord's Prayer. For those of you who listened into to uh, Pastor Chat last night, and a little plug here, if you haven't already listened to it, you can find pa Pastor Chat episode nine on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. But in Pastor Chat uh, episode nine last night, we discussed uh, messy church. And the version of the Lord's Prayer we're going to hear today is uh, the messy church version of the Lord's Prayer, um, the global messy church. And I think you will enjoy hearing it. It's a little longer than usual, but I hope you will use it as a time of uh, prayer and meditation and uh, love for others and love for this world, uh, all of its mess and all of the messiness of our lives 
and all that God is doing to redeem and restore us everywhere, even though at times we have trouble believing that. And so now let us bow our heads and be in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather from many different locations, grateful for this opportunity to be together in worship and prayer. We pray for all of those who are with us this morning in mind and body and spirit. And we begin by asking you to heal, O oh Lord, our prayers for the community of our world. And now, oh God, we ask for you to hear our prayers for the communities around us and for the communities that we are part of, including our church community. So we remember, of course, BD and Vera and Donna and Susan. And now we pray, O oh God, for our individual lives and concerns that we have this morning. Search our hearts. Meet us where we are in need. We pray for friends and family, loved ones who may be struggling. We pray this morning for Alan and Kim, for a family that Stacy is working with. Now, God, we conclude our time of prayer by sharing together in the Lord's Prayer with brothers and sisters in the messy church around the world. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour, pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation. Mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartient le règne. La puissance et la gloire. Au siècle des siècles. Amen. Amen. Szented meg őket a te igazságoddal. A te igéd, igazság. Amiképpen te küldtél engem a világra, úgy küldtem én is őket a világra. 
és én értük, oda szentelem magam, hogy ők is megszenteltek ké legyenek az igazságban. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ein sad, a run oit in a nevoid, sank tither the enno, delet the dinas, gunelet the rushes, megis in a nev, vechi am they are heavy. Doroni hath you. Ein bara benyddio. A mafa i ni, ein dyletio. Fel yma ddeun i nai, ein dyletwyr. Ac na carwai ni i profedigaeth, eith i gwared i'r rhag drwg, can i seiddo ti o deinas, a'r nerth, a'r gogoniant, yn oes oesoedd. Amen. Nuestro Padre quien estás y los cielos. How I be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Diege ilionhal yangshigul chuopshigo. Uriga uriege che jiunjaril sahayo chungot kachi. Uriye cheril sahayo chuopshigo. Megzare tan be besuse bedahim, balke mara as badi rahai bede. Dios el reino, el poder y la gloria, por los signos de los signos. Amen. Onze Vader in de hemel, laat iedereen u eren, laat uw nieuwe wereld komen en laat op aarde uw wil gedaan worden, net zoals dat in de hemel gebeurt. Geef ons vandaag het eten dat we nodig hebben. En vergeef ons wat we fout gedaan hebben, want wij hebben ook andere mensen hun fouten vergeven. Help ons om nooit tegen u te kiezen en bescherm ons tegen de macht van het kwaad, want u bent koning, u regeert met grote macht voor altijd. Amen. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy y perdona nuestras ofensas, así como nosotros también perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Y no nos dejes caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por todos los siglos. Amén. 
Vår Fader, du som är i himlen, låt ditt namn bli helgat. Låt ditt rike komma. Ske din vilja på jorden så som i himlen. Ge oss idag det bröd vi behöver. Och förlåt oss våra skulder. Liksom vi har förlåtit dem som står i skuld till oss. Och utsätt oss inte för prövning. Utan rädda oss från det onda. Ditt är riket. Din är makten och äran. I evighet. Amen. This is the second week in a row that I am preaching a sermon based on a book that I found out about on Twitter, which is a reminder that some good things actually can come from social media. Anyway, this book this week is called Gentle and Lowly, and it is written by Dane Ortland. It is a book that was inspired by one scripture, two verses, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And I want to read to you from the New King James Version, which is the version that Ortland uses in the book. It reads, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right at the beginning, Ortland explains why these two verses are so crucial in helping us to understand who Jesus was and what his heart was all about. He writes, my dad pointed out to me something that Charles Spurgeon pointed out to him. Now as an aside, Charles Spurgeon was a very famous preacher of the past. Ortland goes on in the four gospel accounts given to us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's about 89 chapters of biblical text. There's only one place where Jesus tells us about his heart. And that one place is Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. I am gentle and lowly in heart. I wanted to use the new King James Version like Ortland does because it uses that word lowly. That's an old sounding word, isn't it? When was the last time you heard somebody describe anything as lowly, let alone their heart? In fact, in most translations of the Bible now, the word isn't even used. Instead, most often that verse is translated, I am gentle and humble or I am meek and humble. But I kind of like that translation of gentle and lowly in heart. For lowly in heart, I think, makes us think of someone who's down here with us, not up here, maybe with God or with the fine and the popular people. It's important, I think, that we think about Jesus that way. It's even more important that Jesus thought about himself that way. At the time of the original King James Version writing, the word lowly would have been commonly defined as something like having a low esteem of one's own worth. Now think about that, having a low esteem of one's own worth. How many famous, accomplished people or successful people in our world today have a low esteem of their own worth? Not many. Now note, it's not that Jesus didn't have a good self-esteem. We know that he did. It's just that his self-esteem 
wasn't based on feeling that he was any better than anyone else. See that difference? It's a simple but crucial one. Because if Jesus thought he was better than others, then others would not have felt comfortable coming to him for help. So we learn immediately in this book about two of the foundational qualities of the heart of Jesus. We, we learn that the heart of Jesus is gentle. And some of us in our church right now are reading a book. We're, we're finishing our last session this week, a book called A Gentle Answer by Scott Sauls. And in that book, Scott Sauls writes, little children, prostitutes, tax collectors, sinners, people who lacked education, the poor, the sick, the unemployed, lepers, crooks, addicts, people with disabilities and special needs, the elderly, misfits, all felt worse and more burdened after encountering the religious authorities of their day. But they felt better and less burdened after encountering Jesus. For Jesus not only said the word, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, but he also lived and embodied those words with his gentle spirit. He was also lowly in heart. That means in some sense that he was accessible. His heart was reachable by people. The bar wasn't set way up here or with lots of complications. It was set at a place where all of us could cross that bar and access the heart of Jesus. Nothing stood in the way of people connecting with him if they wanted to. Other words that we could use to describe this quality are things like welcoming, non-judgmental, open, approachable. In other words, just show up as you are, wherever you are, and that's all it takes to access the heart of Jesus. Show up, and you can access it. Now, those adjectives, those qualities of the heart of Jesus should describe the qualities of our hearts and our churches. But do they? That's an important question for us to consider this morning. Now, it's interesting, even or maybe at least for this mainline Protestant pastor, thinking about examining the heart of Jesus in some formal way kind of seems like something that would have been done in the past. And indeed, it, it was a lot. This was talked about a lot. And we learn about that in Ortland's book, talked about, for example, by Jonathan Edwards quite frequently. But not so much these days. I mean, I can't really remember sermons that I've heard or read specifically about the heart of Jesus. But Ortland says, and I think he's right, that that's a mistake. He argues one thing to get straight right from the start is that when the Bible speaks of the heart, whether Old Testament or new, it is not speaking of our emotional life only, but of the central animating center of all that we do. Now, let me say that line again. The Bible speaks of the heart as the central animating center of all that we do. He goes on. It is what gets us out of bed in the morning and what we daydream about as we drift off to sleep. It is our motivational headquarters. The heart in biblical terms is not part of who we are, but the center of who we are. The heart is a matter of life. The heart drives all that we do. It is who we are. So you see why reflecting on the heart of Jesus makes so much sense for us to do today. 
So I want to take just a couple more minutes to talk about a couple of the other qualities that Ortland talks about in his book. Just a few of them. The first is that the heart of Jesus was human. The heart of Jesus was human. Jesus didn't put on a divine costume and pretend to be human and then take that costume off at some point. Not at all. He remained human from the start to the finish. And it means everything that he did. He is gentle and lowly in heart in large, large measure because he understood what it meant to be like us. Not just like us, but to, to be us in a fundamental, real way. With all our strengths and all our weaknesses, with all our joy and all our suffering, not some of it, but all of it. It's also why he calls us to him, why that's so important to him, to teach us. He knows to be human means on some level, by definition, to be weary. It means to be burdened at times. It means to be restrained and controlled by the yoke and authority of others. But he also knows, because he lived it, that we can find rest in him and peace through his gentle teachings, through learning his way and walking it to the very best of our abilities. Also, the heart of Jesus is rich with mercy. It is rich with mercy towards all of God's creation because that is what the heart of the God of Jesus is like. Paul in the letter to the Ephesians chapter two, verses one through six puts it this way. But God who is, is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespass. Think about that. Even when we were dead in trespass, meaning when we were dead wrong in our lives, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you had been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Ortland then writes these magnificent words in his book about God and mercy. He writes, whether we have been sinned against or have sinned ourselves into misery. The Bible says God is not tight fisted with mercy, but open handed. Not frugal, but lavish. Not poor, but rich. That God is rich in mercy means that your regions of deepest shame and regret are not hotels through which divine mercy passes, but homes in which divine mercy abides. It means the things about you that make you cringe the most, make God hug the most. It means his mercy is not calculating and cautious, like ours is. It is unrestrained, flood-like, sweeping, magnanimous. It means our haunting shame is not a problem for God, but it's the very thing God loves most to work with. It means our sins do not cause God's love to take a hit. Our sins cause God's love 
to surge forward towards us all the more. It means on that day, when we stand before God, quietly, unhurriedly, we will weep with relief, shocked at how impoverished a view of God's mercy-rich heart we had. And it is that mercy that we see in the heart of Jesus throughout the stories in the New Testament. The final quality I want to mention is a big one. One that is hard to comprehend at times, but it is at the core of our faith. And that is that the heart of Jesus is eternal. Spiritually, it is still beating. He's still inviting us to him. He's still advocating for us. He's still interceding for us. He's still teaching us, still redeeming us, still forgiving us, still fighting for justice for us, still loving us beyond our comprehension. Jesus is still with us now and forever. It's the core of the good news of the gospel. Hope eternal, an eternal message of hope. And with it comes an eternal invitation. It's those two verses again. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And with that invitation comes an eternal question. How will we respond? How will you respond? How will I respond to Christ's invitation to come to him? To come to him. I like what Ortland says in his book. He says, go to him. Go to Jesus. Let Jesus love you. He says the Christian life boils down to two steps. Step one, go to Jesus. Step two, see number one. He says whatever is crumbling around you in your life, wherever you feel stuck, this remains undeflectable. His heart for you, the real you, is gentle and lowly. Remember, gentle, kind, caring, careful with you, lowly, acceptable, welcoming, accessible to us. Ortland says, so, so go to him. That place in your life where you feel most defeated, he is there. He lives there. Right there. And his heart for you, not on the other side of it. Not when things get better or you become a better person, but right there in that darkness, the heart of Jesus is there for you and it is gentle and it is lowly. Portland says your anguish is his home. 
go to him. And if you knew his heart, he says, you would. And I would add, it is never too late. It can happen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. I have a uh, new song this morning. Thank you to Pastor Evan and Lori. This is a song that should go with today's message. Gentle. That Jesus was and say that Jesus is Jesus. But is. people disrespect me. What do you expect me to do? of the world says take up my burden why do I carry the weight of the world on my shoulders I need to carry pebbles instead of carrying boulders what do you expect me to do that's what I ask myself and what Jesus asked himself to do he said I am gentle Lord. I am lonely Bring it into me. He you know what we're feeling. He don't want us to carry our burden. He wants to carry his burden and mine. He's responsible for everything. He wants to carry his burden and mine. And he says, My burden is light. How is that right? How can, can that be right? right? How can the creator of the universe and all that is in it say that his yoke is easy and his burden is light? Can that be right? He is the truth. He is the way. I believe I heard you say. I say Jesus is, Jesus is, I say Jesus is, is. Here. he stays here, Gentle. he can feel no. what I feel, and when I don't see him, and right now for sure I don't feel him, why do I carry the weight of the world on my shoulders, I need to carry pebbles instead of carrying boulders, he says bring it into me, Gentle. 